almost no reverb in here. It does require phantom power. You probably want to be close miking. See how boomy that gets? I was going to do a mic shootout, but it's easier to do a guitar shootout. That's too hot. So let's just roll that back. That's how musicians cheat. Hey guys, this is Yusuf. Welcome to part two of the music production series, Recording Acoustic Guitar. So last time we recorded, we did a drum track in Superior Drummer 3. So this time I'm gonna show you how to take that, put it into Pro Tools. Uh, your DAW might be different if you're using Logic or uh, Studio One or any DAW, but I'll show you in Pro Tools. And then we're gonna record some acoustic guitar. So first I wanna just go over uh, basics. So the first thing, before you even have your guitar or your mics or your DAW or anything, the first thing to consider is the room, actually, the place that you're sitting in. If you're lucky enough to have a large room at your disposal, like a big hall or a room with a high ceiling, and I'm talking big as like, you know, bigger than a bedroom, like a living room. If it's a living room or bigger, especially if the ceilings are high, that's a good room to record in. Uh, the other thing you want to consider for your room is acoustic treatment. If you notice, I have these acoustic panels all around. You can use two different materials, and there's many videos to show you how to make these panels. I won't go into that. Uh, you either use uh, compressed fiberglass insulation, which is this yellow stuff. It's really itchy. Or you can use uh, rock wool, which is, also, which is this gray kind of wooly insulation stuff, and it's also itchy. Uh, it all sucks to work with, but basically what that does is it deadens the sound in your studio or your room And especially if you're using a smaller room You really want to put that stuff up because it's really gonna dampen your sound It's gonna kill the reverb in the room if you hear my voice and my, my guitar is very dry in here There's almost no reverb in here, and that's what you want in a smaller room if you have a bigger room these techniques might vary. I have a selection of mics here I just wanted to show you. This isn't exactly the mic I'm using, uh, but it's the same type of mic. So if you notice, I'm using a little bit different. I'm using a Bayer Dynamic mic here. This is an AKG C451E. Uh, they're the same type of microphone, so I would recommend using a small condenser microphone. It's a condenser microphone, and that means that it needs an outside power source. So this does require phantom power to function. So. Uh, your mixer or your console or your in this case my sound card which is apogee duet back there uh, is running phantom power to this microphone some people will use a large diaphragm condenser microphone like uh, i have a u87 over there or above me i have um an another large diaphragm condenser uh so you can use that and if you you'll see uh the beatles actually use that quite a bit i think there's a famous picture of paul mccartney recording i think blackbird or something with just like one big, I think it was U U47 from above. So you can use a large diaphragm condenser. Uh, I think Cat Stevens used a, a, a large diaphragm condenser on his guitar. But I just like the sound of these. And um, the, the small diaphragm condenser just does it for me. Um, the other thing you want to consider in your miking techniques, uh, you probably want to be close miking. Unless you're in like a really nice studio with a huge room and perfect acoustic treatment and everything. Like even this room is kind of small, so I, I try not to get the room sound as much. If you have a great hall and a great setup, then yeah, okay, you can take your mic and make it, you know, maybe five feet, six feet back. But in most scenarios, if you have a smaller room, you really want to consider close miking your guitar and your instrument. And so that's what I do. Basically, I just take the mic and I kind of try to point this head at the 12th fret. There, there's other ways you can do this. So um, let me give you an example. So, sometimes some people will say, well, they'll mic the body. They'll want more low end in the guitar. So now I'm pointing the guitar. See how boomy that gets? I've got a lot of bass in there. Right? So Because you're, you're directly at the sound hole. You know, even if you get toward the bridge here, see it's pointing more toward the bridge. It's even more boom, you know? So you don't want to actually just point it at the sound hole. It's a little too boxy, boomy sounding. Uh, and in fact, a good a good uh, rule of thumb is <laughs> point it at the 12th fret, roughly. See how that low end just tightened up. Um, you can also experiment. You know, if you have a second mic, you can do these in stereo. You can have one doing that, and maybe you have one going at the body in a crisscross pattern. Uh, on an angle, see, so the angle, see how the boom is less? 
but it gives you a different sound than, you know. That gives you a little more low end, but it's not as boxy as, you know, this, you know, di right directly at the sound hole. But um, it's not as crisp as right there. So the way I do it, I just point it directly at the 12th fret. I'm right on it, uh, 90 degrees to the fretboard, and you know, I move around a little, and it, you know. Um, if if you can't afford a, or you don't or it's not available to use a small diaphragm condenser, um, I'm gonna recommend using one of these, which is a Shure SM57. It's not gonna capture quite the detail that a, d a condenser mic would because this is a dynamic microphone, so this doesn't require power. In fact, uh, you just plug this in and it works. If you want a super pro trick hack. If you're really broke, like I have been in my life, <laughs> you can take one of these. Almost everyone should have one of these, I think. It's a vocal mic, SM58, studio standard. Here's a little trick uh, that you might not know. The SM58 is basically an SM57 with a little cone on the head. For, this is for singing. But if you want to mic an instrument with it, including acoustic guitar, and you can use this on snare drum and whatever else, but um, voila, now it's an SM57. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You know, it's not exactly, but, you know, that right there, that's going to give you a pretty decent sound for acoustic guitar, if that's your only option. Again, I would really, really recommend condenser mics. Um, you know, the other thing that's going to affect your recording, you know, obviously the player is the number one thing. If you have, you know, a master guitarist, you know, uh, remind me to hire one because that's not me. But, you know, if you have a master instrumentalist, that's going to be your best thing, you know. But um, aside from the player himself or herself, your main variables are going to be your room, which we talked about, your microphone, and the other thing is going to be your instrument. Uh, so different guitars really do record differently. Here's, uh, here's my Martin guitar. Okay, and now let's, let's grab that other one. Let's hope this baby's in tune. Now this is a little lower end of a guitar, and see, it's going to have a different tone. This is the most important part of your recording. The snark. Got to make sure your stuff is in tune. Otherwise, good luck with the rest of your track. <laughs> so notice the difference, you know, between this and the Martin in terms of how they record. You can hear there's a different tonality to the guitars. Each instrument has kind of a voice of its own. You know, the Martin, I would say, has a little more low end and a little more precision in the, the bass notes. Uh, whereas this has a little, it's a little muddier down, down here. Uh, maybe I'll show you the Gibson too. I was gonna do a mic shootout, but it's easier to do a guitar shootout. And really, just trust me, uh, you should use a condenser mic, whether it's large or small. Try to use one. So here's a higher end guitar. This is my Gibson. Uh, this is a much more expensive guitar, and you'll hear the difference right away. As you can hear, there's a lot more clarity in the low end, and the highs are a little crispier. The other thing that really affects your recorded sound, believe it or not, is actually the type of strings you use to gauge the thickness of these strings and how worn out they are. Like this, these strings are a little worn out; they're a little, they're a little dull. So you know, if I wanted a little shinier of a sound, a little more high end, probably change the strings. If I'm going for a little more dull, rustic kind of sound, I want to beat the hell out of those strings and and get them dead acoustic guitar can be very challenging to record uh, electric guitar is much easier because you have a magnet right on it and you can just plug into the system and you can basically put the speakers on with acoustic guitar you have to be on headphones or you have to be in a different room and anything any little breath you do any subtle movement you know if I if you shake the mic like that if you touch it you know as soon as you add a microphone onto the instrument you add all kind of levels of complexity so don't get frustrated. Uh, acoustic guitar is one of the hardest instruments, in fact, I think, to record uh, for producers. And I think a lot of producers really would agree with that. I want to show you from start to finish how to actually get things plugged in. So we have our small diaphragm condenser microphone that I suggested you use. Um, and then we have an XLR cable uh, wrapped around this little uh, mic boom stand. And you're going to have a sound card. This is one I have, it's an Apogee Duet. They sell a lot of different ones 
On your sound card, you're basically gonna have these mic inputs, okay? So these are microphone preamps. Any sound card is gonna have a microphone preamp. You're just gonna plug in, and on this particular one, you control the gain like so. You can see as I roll up the gain, it's, it gets louder, and as I roll it down, then it goes back down. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, this particular mic, we're gonna basically uh, add, so I'm talking into mic one here, and we got our other mic into the second, into mic two. Uh, and we're going to add phantom power here, 48 feet right here. And now you can hear we have sound in this mic. And so then we're going to go into uh, Pro Tools here. Let's just do a new track for you so you see. So you will go to create a new track. It's Command Shift N, new track. And you create a new mono track for your guitar. And there's our mono track. This is just a preset template I have for sessions. Command equal sign brings up the mixer window in Pro Tools. And now here's our new audio. And we're going to put mic two as the input. And we're going to arm that to record. And you'll hear some latency now. That's that mic. And then we're going to mute that. Latency's gone. But as you can see, the signal here is still there. Now we're armed and ready to record, but we still didn't uh, adjust our, our gain. So let me get the guitar and we'll do that. What we're gonna wanna do, get the mic onto the 12th fret like we talked about. Okay. And then we're gonna play our part, whatever the part is. We wanna play it into the mic the way we're gonna play it. And then we're gonna try to get a gain uh, the, pr the proper gain staging, they call it. Uh, basically, you just want this uh, meter um, to not spike. You don't want it to go too high. And you don't want it too low either, or you might have to make it louder later and it's gonna be all hissy. So you want it kind of right in the middle. So, you just, you know, whatever your interface is, it'll have a, a knob on it. This one has one knob that controls both. And that's, think of it like the volume knob. It's not exactly a volume knob, it's adding gain, but it makes it louder or quieter, basically. And um, so let's let's say we were going to do this part. So I can see the gain is it's a little hot. See, we're kind of coming up on. I don't know. I can't see that. What is that? Minus ten. We're, we're, we're getting above. We're getting close to the. See how we're almost to the top. That's too hot. So let's just roll that back. Roll back the gain. That's a little better. Okay. Okay, and so let's do our part that we were doing earlier. Maybe that's even a little hot, you know, get it. It's always want to err on the side of, you can always add gain later. I mean, not to, you know, if, if it's down here, that's not, you know, then you're gonna, that's gonna be too quiet. But, you know, it, it's always better, especially when you're using di digital um, recording interfaces like this, you don't want to hit the top. You, they call it clipping. You don't want it to go red or dark orange. Uh, if you're using like an analog console, like a, if you're using an analog mixer like that, you might be able to push the gain and it might get a nice sound. But uh, here in this digital realm, it's just going to give you hiss and static and, and it's going to give you this sound, you know. So I think that's a good level for the gain. So that's how you basically set up your mic and set up your gain staging and once you've got it so now we would be ready to record our track and that would be it so we're gonna go ahead now and do a performance uh, for the track that we did and uh, and I'll also show you how to set up uh, after I do the performance how to set up your superior drummer inside your Pro Tools in case you're wondering how I got the drums you know from the file into the Pro Tools and how to sync it with that so that you can record your guitar in your DAW with your drums, your virtual drums.
here's the guitar that we recorded. I'm just going to go in. I recorded it in two takes. I'm just going to fade those together. And now it's one track. That's how musicians cheat. <laughs> uh, how did I get the drums into the software? I created an instrument track here. Let's call it drums. Uh, but here I'll show you. It's just the same thing. Command Shift N to create a new track, but I would create, in this case, it should have been stereo, but it doesn't really matter. Um, instrument track, and that's how I created this instrument track. Then I went here, multi channel plugin, um, instrument, and then, where is it? Superior Drummer 3, right there. I instantiated it there. Takes a second, and that's our thing. And I already preloaded it, but what I did was I just went, I opened, and I'm not going to do that, but you just open the file, you find the file that you uh, that you created last time, that we created last time, we created a um, virtual drums file with the Superior Drummer 3 here, and uh, it loads up. One thing is, if the tempo's 85 here, uh, you got to do two things. You got to check this, follow host, which is already checked here. It's unchecked, okay? And then that way the software will follow when you when you play it or record, okay, back. And the other thing you gotta do is go here and manually adjust the tempo in your session. Make sure you're at the beginning of the song, not the third bar. And I've already done so, so that it matches 85, the tempo in the Superior Drummer. And then your drums are there, good to go. So now we have a track with drums and acoustic guitar maybe we'll solo over it <laughs> 